we all believe in Almighty God. God is always with us. We all must be honest to ourselves. If we are honest to ourselves, we will be honest to others as well. So let's start with this. Great message. This seminar is designed to give message to the world. Can I, can I again ask you to be silent? Please do not disturb your neighbor lady. Is it about that they have? She can go out. But do not disturb. Do not disturb. Now this passage of Dr. Murray Montessori who has discovered and observed the charisma of laws of nature. All the Montessorians they must have a very clear understanding of the laws of nature. If you understand the laws of nature, you will be able to understand the child. And the child is a man, a future man. So, we got to understand, this is the first chapter of Montessori system of Dr. Maria Montessori. She spent more than around 50 years to discover the laws of nature and would you believe keeping in view this thing I have decided to teach to the world that understand the laws of nature. Unless until we do not understand, we have no right to handle the child. We have no right to handle the child. And February 16 was the start of this mission from Sri Lanka and since then we moved to Nepal, 
came, came back to Pakistan, then we went to Indonesia, and for your information, most of you are aware now that we have entered African countries. The impossible place for the Montessorians to enter, but I have decided to take this message to those countries, African countries. Our conferences are lined up. If you are visiting Facebook, you will see the Nigerians on the Facebook, full of Nigerians. And they are very much looking forward to have us there. It's very far, very expensive. Even the airfare from Pakistan back to Pakistan from Nigeria is one well, like fifty thousand for just one airfare. And for other Asian countries again it's very expensive. But I have undertaken this venture. I'm taking from different countries, the monetary experts and 25 and 26th of May, inshallah, will be charismatic days. Now that, those conferences are again connected with the same laws of nature. Today here, inshallah, we shall try our label best to pass on the message to you so that you take care of the child. It's not that easy to understand, but try to understand, read, study, take interest because the next generation is in your hand. God has privileged you to undertake this noble mission. And make yourself available for handling the child. Now, this seminar which we are going to have today, again, is very expensive. We have booked two halls, and the aim is to give you as much knowledge as we can in this limited time.
Now this conference, this seminar is divided into two sections. The keynote session, when I say keynote session means the lectures with all of you will be given. That lecture is called keynote lectures. And after keynote lectures, there will be two lectures at a time. Half, more or less half here, maybe a little more, and in the other tulip hall. Now, the program is with you, and you know who is going to give you what lecture. I shall indicate you after keynote lecture which lecture will be here and which lecture will be there. So it's, it depends on you where you want to go, to whom you are going to listen, what lecture you are going to take. So that will be, will be explained accordingly at the time. To decide what lecture you are going to take, I'm talking the breakout session. The detail is on this program. It's wonderful to see all these lovely faces on a Sunday morning when most of the women are perhaps sleeping. And this is the beauty uh, that you get as being part of an LFI. Because this is your training and it's amazing. You're going to spend a lovely Sunday today with all of us. So, um, let's get on to the topic. Observation and discoveries made by Dr. Mario Montesi. If we had to change the name of the Montessori method, another name for this method would be laws of nature. Because Montessori method is a reflection of laws of nature. And you will be thinking, you would be wondering, what is this law of nature? I mean, Think for a moment, close your eyes. Everything that exists in this world is governed by laws of nature. Everything that has life, the moon, the stars, the trees, the rain, and if anything goes out of place, it will not have its normal development. So, before I actually start giving you the observation and discoveries that was made by Dr. Maria Montessori, I would like you to take a look at the screen and we are quickly going to glance through the images and then I shall talk about it. Are you ready, Nina? Anyone of you? 
What is one of the most important quality of a scientist? Observation. Yes. That's where Maria Montessori had the upper edge. She had this magical gift, the ability to observe. If she didn't have that, today we will not be having the Montessori system. Because in the first school, Casa di Bambini, when she started off, you know what she started off with? Nothing. No system. No method. All she had was a handful of children and she had this ability to observe, not to interfere. And there she saw some amazing things that even today the world does not believe that can a child be like that? So let's go through what are some of the observation and discovery Dr. Maria Montessori made in the first Casa di Bambini and afterwards in all the Montessori schools that were opened afterwards and her experience of working with children in all over the world between the age 3 to 6 regardless of their religion, culture, background they all did the same thing. What did they do? The very first observation that she made today we know as part of the Montessori system and that is the reputation of exercise. Do you know that? Do you as a student know that? That when we say we are done with the presentation and we say let the child repeat for as long as he like. How did she discover that? Once in Casa di Bambini, she saw a little girl and she was only three years old. Imagine a small girl, age three, how restless they are. She noticed that this little girl was taking out the cylinder from the cylinder block, if you have seen it, or you will see it, and she kept taking it out, pulling it back, taking it out, pulling it back. And out of habit, because she was a scientist, she decided to observe. And she said, let me see if this girl is just showing off. She told the teacher to just, you know, sing around and clap around the girl. That didn't disturb the child. Then she lifted the chair that the little girl was sitting on. She picked up the girl. And all the girl that she did was to, she clenched on to the cylinder block and continued her activity. From the time Maria Montessori started to count, do you know how many times this little girl, who was only three years old, took out and put back the cylinder? 42 times. How many of us will have that much patience? To let a child do something so many times. No. That's when we stop the child. So we don't see the result. Afterwards, the girl continued and continued. And suddenly, for no reason, she stopped. And Maria Montessori describes in her book, The Secret of the Childhood, that when the girl stopped, she was as if she had awoken from a sleep. She was fresh. Her eyes were glowing. What was that? Maria Montessori started thinking, what is it that this makes the child so different from us adults? When we do something, we are tired. And we do something only once. I will need, if I want to drink water, I will just pour it once. But this girl kept doing it again and again and again. And Mario Montessori says that for the first time we got an insight into the psyche of the child. What is actually unfolding in the child's personality. Whatever the child is doing, it is not for an external reason. Can we remember that we the adult do things for external, you know, external reason. I drink a glass of water, you can see that. But the child doing an activity again and again and again, again it is to build himself. Many other activities reoccurring like that in the first Casa di Bambini. Once she see, show the child with a dirty hand and she decided to give them a lesson as to how to wash their hands. 
And after that, all the children in the school will wash their hands and wash and wash and wash their hands. How many of you have had small children at home and you see them washing their hands? Anybody has ever experienced that? Right? They just wash and we stop them because they are wasting water. But they are washing because of the internal urge. And from that time on, the duties that is created to you in the environment. So what was the first discovery? Reputation of exercise. Okay, never forget that. Discovery number two that was also made in the first class at the academy, free choice. You know, Montessori had to speak about give the child the freedom to choose his activity. Oh my God. Remember in the first class at the academy, there was no Montessori method. Dr. Maria Montessori says, I did not start with a method. I did not sit in an armchair and thought of a method. It was the children who showed me by observing the children, not interfering. She noticed that in the beginning, each child was given activity. The teacher will collect it from them and drop it back in the cupboard. She heard that and she smiled. And she said, the reason is that the children wanted to know the place for the game. And the children wanted to go and select their own activity. So from that time onwards, the locked cupboard was demolished and the introduction of the low shelf that we see in all the that was introduced. The children were presented all different materials, but they selected only the ones, a certain one. With that, there were the material that she had brought with her, they were modified. She came to the conclusion, children are only attracted to something that is going to appeal to their physical and mental need. I do not like to play with toys. That's the only thing we can associate. Isn't it so? I mean, all these toys company will shut down if we said that to the world. But it is true. In the beginning, in first class at the there were many toys that was presented to the poor children by rich ladies. Maria Montessori herself, she used to want to help the children play with the toys. They would play with the toys for a little while. And afterwards, the toys were left in a corner. Have any of you ever experienced that? You may have bought your son a very expensive car or a doll for your daughter. They are so excited about it for a few days and then it's... Is it true? Yes. yes. You know why? The, tro the toys have no activity for the child. The toy is you just spin something and the monkey begins to beat a drum or the car starts to go with a remote control. So the child stands up and is amused. But that amusement is just for a little while. It is like us wanting to play. It is us wanting to play uh, when we have a leisure time. You know when we play chess, when we want to relax. Otherwise, when we have something more important on our mind, like work, if I have to give this lecture, I'm not going to be playing chess. So do with the child. He only plays with the child when he has nothing better to do. Otherwise, all the time, the children have something more important to do. And do you know what is nature's command? What is the law of nature for the child? What is the work of the child? Can anybody give me? The child has come into this world with a mission, with an assignment. God has sent him to go and build the adult and construct the adult. We are here today thanks to the child and that is big job. For the child it is like do or die. He works or he cannot survive. So, can anybody tell me? What are some of the observations he has made so far? Reputation of, I will be repeating it. Reputation of exercises. Can I hear it? Reputation of exercises. Free choice. 
children do not like toys and now you have understood why. Another very controversial discovery made by Dr. Mario Montessori which unfortunately the kindergarten system and the nursery system do not understand, do not appreciate and that is that reward and punishment has no value in the life of the child. Huh? Reward? Don't you always say that to the child? You finish your homework, we'll go outside, we'll go and play. I'll take you to the park if you do this. There's always an if. If you come first in your examination, we'll buy you a bicycle. All the rewards. Punishment. If you don't finish your homework, you are not allowed to watch TV. I have heard parents say that if you don't finish your homework, you are not getting your dinner. And if you don't finish your homework, I am going to lock you up in the bedroom or in the bathroom. I know a little girl, who used, her mother used to beat her up and she will finish her homework in tears. But when that girl went to school, she refused to do her work because she knew that the teacher would not beat her. So how this philosophy came into being about not rewarding and punishment, punishing the child. Once again, in the first Casa di Bambini, one day, Dr. Maria Montessori, she walked into the classroom and she saw a little boy sitting in isolation all by himself on a chair. She asked the teacher, why is he sitting away from the rest of the class? So the teacher said very firmly, he is being punished. Punished? Then Dr. Maria Montessori looked at the child and asked, but if he is being punished, why is he wearing a big star pendant that was given to the children as a reward? So the teacher went on to explain that this reward was given to another child for doing good work and as she was doing the coloring, this pendant was a source of disturbance. So she took it out and she gave it to the child who was being punished. Now if we get an award, will we just take it out and give it to someone else? That goes to explain the value of either reward or punishment in the life of the child. The girl who got the reward, it had no meaning for her, it was disturbing her, so she gave it to the boy. The boy who was being punished, there was no shame on his face and he was sitting all by himself and his absorbent mind was working and he was taking in all the impression. So, do you understand that? So ladies, the future directresses, please, we cannot have the system until and unless we live up to all these observation and discovery because this is the Montessori system. Do not give reward and punishment to your children. So if you don't give reward, and the children are always pushing their hand for a staff. You give one, then they say, I this one. Then they put their cheek, I this one. If we do not give them reward and punishment, what do we do? The word is encouragement, appreciation. So a child who makes a coloring perfect, you say, wow, that looks beautiful. And a child who comes with a little scribble, just like a kira makora, you can't even decipher what it is. You still go and say, wow, this is beautiful. That is encouragement. Because each child has come up with his best work. So is that understood? Four things so far. Reputation of exercise, free choice, no toys, no value for reward and punishment. Replace it, replace it with the word encouragement and appreciation. In fact, that holds possible in the life of we, the adult also. We always like to be encouraged. We always like to be appreciated. This correct means for not not taking anything. What else did she discover in the first Kasani Bambi? Dignity. Self-respect. Small children, three-year-old, four-year-old. What kind of respect are you going to give them? They are children. You know, abhi to bachai. Well, an example took place in the school that made Dr. Maria Montessini's heart melt. One day 
she saw that the children who came to the school, you know, they came from a very poor, illiterate family. They were very dirty. Their nose used to be always one. So she decided to give them a little humorous lesson. She thought the children would find it funny. First, she showed them how to fold and take out a handkerchief in many different ways. And then very discreetly, in an elegant way, she took out the handkerchief from her purse and she blew her nose. And when she blew her nose with the handkerchief, she thought the children will find it very funny and they will laugh. But to her surprise, they did not respond. There was just pin drop silence. And after a minute, they all clapped as if there was a, you know, a standing ovation for her. And she didn't understand. She was unable to make the connection. Why would the children clap by when she showed them how to blow her nose, their nose? And as she went home that day, all the children, they hopped off, ran out to the window and waved at her and said, thank you, thank you for the lesson. All that day and the days that followed, Maria Montessori kept thinking, what have I done so well, so good, that they were so impressed. And she realized that self-respect and dignity, even in this life of the small children, are very important. The children are always being scolded for having dirty nose. The children are always being, like, you know, ashamed, put to ashamed. Look at your nose, it's running. But no one, no one ever thinks about showing them how to blow their nose. And to top it all, in winter, even in our school, the children come with runny nose and the parent fill up a big handkerchief to add more to their embarrassment. So please, children are human. They are sensitive. They have feeling. That's how God has created them. Let us not think of the child as a small, miniature size adult. We are two aliens from two different worlds. We've got to understand the nature of their development. We got to understand the laws of it. Another discovery that Dr. Maria Montessori made in the first Casa de Gandhi by observation, and that was their love for silence. Oh no, impossible. You have a room full of 40 children. Do you think you're going to have silence? Will you? You know why? because we have not discovered the true child. Maria Montessori was on her way to discovering the new true child.